Okay, I thought I'd show you uh, the next step in doing this guitar, the French polishing. Um, on Wednesday, I did my 10th French polishing session. And at that stage, what you do is you let it sit for uh, two or three days um, before you uh, do a level sanding, the first level sanding of the finish. Um, and so on Wednesday, I set it aside um, and I waited Thursday, Friday, and then last night I actually started on the level sanding. I couldn't wait. Um, and uh, you wait those two to three days because you want the finish to harden enough or to dry enough for you to be able to uh, level sand without um, sanding through uh, to the wood. Um, and ten sessions or ten coats uh, is sufficient to do that. And so yesterday what I did was I started um, I started on the back and uh, what you do basically is you sand the finish uh, and you're just trying to make it somewhat smooth. Uh, you don't have to get it totally flat, um, but the majority of the um, pores you, you sand down towards. And so you end up with kind of a satiny sheen. Um, and it's just to provide a very nice smooth surface for the next uh, uh, sessions of French polish and uh, so what I did was I did the back and well, if you can tell in the light there you still see some shiny spot but that's okay uh, but you're just kind of dulling it down you're, you're, uh, the way that Tom Bills um, whose method I'm using, the way he describes it is imagine the little sanding block with the sandpaper as kind of a, a mini plane and you're just kind of uh, trying to you know plane away the high spots of the finish um, to provide a smooth a smooth surface and so I did the back yesterday uh, I did kind of a, a preliminary sanding of this side. I still have more to go on this side. Um, and so today I'm going to show you through working on this side, which I haven't, I just barely started um, sanding this side. As you can see, it's still glossy. Um, so I'll show you the method. What you do first is you want to clean that surface and so I use this Ronsonol, basically uh, all it is is naphtha. And naphtha is good because it just uh, cleans, it doesn't dissolve any shellac finish, it doesn't go soak into the wood or anything, it just is a good cleaner and it evaporates really quickly. And so I just put some of this fluid onto a paper towel and then you just wipe it, just clean it. It evaporates immediately, but you want to get off the surface any dust and it cleans off any residual olive oil that still might be on the surface from the previous sessions. Okay, so that's it. It dries immediately. And what I use is this paper, which is it's a very good paper. It's Carborundum brand um, 1000 grit uh, aluminum oxide um, called Premier Red Dry Lube. Um, but I found it's a very, very nice 
sandpaper to use. And so what I do is I take these sheets and cut them up into little pieces to fit this uh, little foam pad. Uh, it's about one and a quarter inches uh, long, I think, by three quarters of an inch wide and maybe half an inch deep. And I can't remember how I made this, whether I just took some old flip-flops, which is the same basic foam. It's, it's somewhat firm, but not hard. Um, has some give to it. But this size um, seems to work well because I can control it. And it's kind of the same size as a French polishing pad that you use when you're applying the finish. And so it's kind of a good size. Um, but anyway, I have cut up sheets of this sandpaper to fit this foam block. And I just wrap it around like that. And here's how I go about doing the sanding. So I already did a little bit right there. You can tell it's kind of dull. Um, so I'll start up here. And just a light touch. You don't really, uh, you don't dig in. Uh, you just lightly sand in circular motions. Kind of the same motions that you use when you're applying the French polish uh, finish, the shellac. Uh, just very lightly over and over. And uh, when I'm doing the sides, it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, you have to be more careful when doing the sides because they're curved. Whereas when I'm doing the back, it's easier uh, to control it because it's flat. So you have to be careful when you're doing a curved surface on just how you're uh, sanding because uh, it would be easier to sand through because of that curve if you're not careful, if you can't, if you're not quite feeling what you're doing. Um, okay, so here's what I do. Just very light. You're not trying to do it all at once. Just very lightly going over and over. And little by little, you're going to be getting that uh, finish leveled. So you do a little bit, and then you constantly want to check the paper. See the paper? You want to, uh, once it starts to develop some uh, little sanding residue, little dots or pills or whatever you want to call it, you want to make sure to wipe them off. So I have a piece of towel here. You can either, even just use your fingernail if it starts to peel up. Because if you leave those on there and continue to use this paper, you run the risk of sanding scratches into your finish. And you don't want that. And once you feel that this paper has started to lose its, you know, sanding ability, uh, gets worn down, then just use another sheet of paper uh, around the block. Okay, so I just continue. And just a very light touch. And you can just keep going over and over a surface. You get a feel for what you're doing. Uh, as long as the dust that you're raising is white or that light color, you're fine. That means you're not sanding through. But if as you're doing this, see, there's some little uh, pills starting to form, which I will wipe away. Uh, as you're doing it, you want to wipe it off and kind of look to see what kind of dust you have. If you start seeing brown or red, you know, the rosewood or the uh, bloodwood color, then you know you've sanded through. But you can also kind of feel it. You can kind of feel um, when you've done that because um, 
when you're sanding and you start to sand through, it's not that smooth, uh, soft feel. It starts to, um, how do I say it? Uh, it starts to resist. And then you know you're sanding wood instead of finish. Um, so that's another way you can tell. You kind of get a feel for it. I remember the um, very first time I leveled a finish on my first guitar. This was way back in 1994. Um, I was using lacquer at that time, but you still had to do the same thing. You had to level the finish at a certain point. It really uh, scared me because I had no concept of what leveling does and that the gloss does come back um, as you polish it. Uh, because I was wondering, why in the world am I sanding away this nice, beautiful, glossy finish that I've been spraying on, or brushing on, or whatever method? You know, why am I sanding it away? You know, how can this come back? Um, so I didn't really know the concept of leveling a finish, and buffing out a finish, and rubbing out a finish, and how it does come back. Um, and it really scared me. But after a guitar or two, you know, I finally got it and uh, understood the, what it was doing. Um, and uh, so I thought I'd just show you the basic, uh, this next stage, which is leveling the finish. So what I'm going to be doing is, you know, going over this entire guitar and leveling the... Uh, finish to to look pretty much like that you know um, just so it's dull most of the shiny spots are gone um, and then after I've done that to the whole guitar um, I'll do the neck and uh, after that you start the next round of uh, bodying which is putting on more uh, coats of the French polish, probably eight to ten coats again. But now, at that point, you have a nice smooth surface with very few pores, and so the finish can go on nice and smoothly, and uh, you can really start seeing the kind of uh, gloss and beautiful finish uh, that you'll end up with until it becomes hopefully kind of a glassy, glossy, glassy finish is kind of your goal. Um, but the level sanding gives you that nice surface on which to build, be able to build that kind of a, a nice French polish uh, finish. Okay, so that's what I'll be doing for a day or two is uh, leveling this finish very carefully and I'll uh, see you in the next video.